11, uh, chapter 1, I don't know where the Holy Spirit's really going to take us. Jacob, what time are y'all leaving? Uh, around 7.30 or 7.30. Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we got just a few minutes with them. We got maybe a few more minutes. Here's what the Lord's really speaking to me tonight, and we'll see what the Holy Ghost wants to say. We're right now in October, and we're nearing this time that we call Halloween in America. And so, you know, people, uh, I don't, I'm not trying to preach on Halloween for it or against it. I'm 100% against Halloween, but I'm saying this ain't a Halloween message. Um, you know, the word Halloween can be broken down as Hallow's Eve. You know, when people study, you know, the costumes, why people wear them, the jack-o'-lantern, what that was all about to actually repel the evil spirits. And, you know, the whole thing, I, I'm not getting deep into Halloween tonight. You know what I mean? But what I did hear the Holy Ghost say is I want you to talk about light because it's a season of darkness. Hallelujah. So I did hear him say that. So in John 1.1 1, 1 it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In the same was in the beginning with God. So God was in the beginning. The word was with him. The word was with God and God was the word. Hallelujah. Remember this before I go any further. The word is God. You're carrying a Bible around with you and basically you're carrying God. You're toting God around with you. You might sometime want to open it up and look at him. I'm just being ugly. <laughs> I just want to look at you today, Lord. He said, well, look up on my word. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen to this. It says, uh, verse 3, All things were made by him, and without him was nothing, was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Let's get this straight. God was in the beginning and with him was word. The word was God and God was the word. Nothing was made that was not made by him, by word. And that word was light. And it says, look, look verse 4, it says, In him was life. And the life was the light of men. So God has eternal life, never to cease. Think about that for a moment. Eternity, God will never cease being. When we're in Him, we'll never cease being. But the fact is, because you're made in His image, you'll never cease being anyway. You just may be with Him or not with Him. With Him in not just heaven, but possibly back on earth in the millennial reign of Christ, but you'll be with God. Or you'll be separated in hell, but you'll always live. That's a revelation that some of y'all need to get, and I may, I may be speaking more to our, our younger congregation tonight, but you need to know the moment that you were conceived, the moment you came into this earth and were born, took a breath, you were an eternal. I believe it happened in your mother's womb with the first heartbeat, but my point is is that you're an eternal being. That's sealed. When the Bible talks about everlasting life, it doesn't mean at that point is when you got the ability to never die. It means that life is in God. You now are able to live eternally with Him. Life is God. Eternal life. Sometimes we think life is just, you know what I mean, what makes us you know, live here, gives us energy, vitality. But it's God, it's the God element. God put the God element in you when you got natural life. Do y'all know right now, if any of y'all ever know anything about CERN, the, the great Hydron uh, Collider, if y'all know anything about it, what they do there at this 17-mile track where they put particles in it, send them around at two times the speed of light and crash them into each other. What they're trying to find is simply the God particle. Because what they're trying to figure out is what is it inside a man, a woman, a boy, a girl, a person? What is it inside of you that gives you life? And what is it that gives you eternal life? Well, it must be a God particle. They can't understand 
while you come out of your mother, take a breath, start crying, become a living being outside the womb. They can't understand how your heart got jump-started. They can't understand this life. But they figure that if they can figure it out and capture it, they can live forever, even without God. They're trying to find the God particle. In God was light, and that light was, the, was life, and that life is the light of men. So before we get God, we don't have light. We have darkness. So before God, there's darkness. Listen, there's, this is what I just hear the Holy Ghost saying, so this ain't going to be super maybe deep theological, but here's the thing. I just keep hearing the Holy Ghost say this right here. Darkness is intriguing. It's mysterious. I'm even going to tell you this. Darkness is kind of fun. Do y'all know the statement that ignorance is bliss? It really is. Because if you're dumb, ignorant, uneducated, unlearned, not knowing. I'm not being condescending. I'm trying to make a point. If you don't know something, you can enjoy it. Then all of a sudden somebody tells you, remind me of my brother. I'll make the story real quick because my time's limited. When he told my mom, he said, I love chitlins. He said, I just love them. He's a teenager, my oldest brother. And my mom said, you love them? Like, I've never cooked them yet. My mom does everything. He goes, where do I get them? She said, son, you can't get them. He said, well, what is it? She said, that's the guts of a hog. He said, my Lord, I don't like that. Well, you thought you did until the light turned on. You thought you loved them just a minute ago, but now that you found out it was the intestines of a hog cut up in little pieces and fried, now you don't want nothing to do with it. Y'all with me? When the light comes on, all of a sudden, some things ain't as fun, but it is truth. And the only thing that'll make you free in your life is truth. And so, so we cannot stick our perver proverbial head in the sand and live in ignorance. I have literally had people say to me before, after a message, after a sermon, had a guy tell me one time, he said, I'm kind of mad at you, Pastor. I said, why are you mad at me? He said, because, because of what you keep teaching us. I said, what are you talking about? He said, you keep telling us more and more truth and now I'm accountable for it. He was mad. I said, what? Keep it dumb? Keep it so simple that you don't have to gain no more light, no more truth, no more life? I'll tell you this right now tonight. I feel this right now. The Holy Ghost wants, wants me to say uh, again. I'm thankful to have the, the youth in here. Man, what a strong, awesome group here tonight. Y'all are awesome. But here's the thing is, if y'all think, uh, if anybody thinks, and here it could be adults, think that I've experienced all of God that there is, don't lie to yourself. We, we have only seen but a fraction of who he is. But the thing is, if we convince ourselves that we have seen full light and who he is, we're deceiving ourselves. And if we deceive ourselves, we'll stay in the darkness that we have. Because why? In him is light and no darkness at all. And when we see him as he really is, that light shines in us and that light becomes life. And we experience more of God by the more we see of him. So you can't say, well, my experience with him has been like, I don't even know if he's real because I prayed and I didn't feel nothing. I didn't see nothing. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. But your beliefs might be. Yeah, but your mindset might be. Yeah, but your opinion might be that you were just trying God. Or maybe that you didn't really believe it. Maybe, maybe you didn't cry out to God with a pure heart, sincerity, and said, Lord, let me see you. Let me see you, God. Here's my life. Take it. I'm not holding any of it back. And in those moments of, of complete yieldedness and sincerity, all of a sudden, he turns on lights. We begin to see parts of him and experience him in ways we've never experienced. Paul said it like this. He said, I've had great revelations of the Lord, but I will come to greater revelations in him. We can never get to the place where we say, man, I think I've tapped God out. To me, it's so exciting. Y'all know what the Bible says about, uh, about uh, when we die and everything or when Jesus returns, either one it says, 
It says, we, not, we shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. Everybody won't die a natural death, but everybody will be changed. He said, in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, when Jesus shows up and we see him as he is, in that moment, we'll be changed. Can't stay the same once you've seen him. But it's the light. So here's what I'm trying to tell you tonight. Here's all I'm trying to tell you. Is that there's got to be a part of us where you simply say, Father, I want to continue to see more of you. It's simply the humble cry or prayer that says, Father God, show me truth. Listen, about me. Show me truth about you and about me. Church, when we're in that humble place of wanting to see, Father lets us see. You know what Jesus said to his disciples? And, and we can read it all, but I just feel limited time, so I want to say it like this. He told them this. It's in the very same passage in Matthew where he's talking about uh, you can't serve two masters. He's talking about He's talking about where your treasure is. He's talking about, he, he goes on by, behind this and he says that you can't serve two masters. You can't serve both, both God and mammon or money, natural money. You can't, you gotta, you gotta sign. But in the middle of that, listen to what he says. He told the disciples, he said, if the light in you be darkness, how great is your darkness? He said, listen to this, he said, the, the eye of the body is the entrance of light. Listen to this. And if your eye be single, your body is full of light. But if your eye be evil, you have darkness. And if your truth be darkness, how great is your darkness. Here's what I'm telling you tonight. Never think you know everything there is to know about our Father or about God. Never get to the place where you don't want to continue to see Him as He is. The truth of His majesty. Never make excuses. Here's the thing that I found in my life. When Jesus said that, it was fascinating to me when he said to his disciples that followed him, lived with him, how great is your darkness. I had to ask Father, I said, when I get to the places where you're not being amazing in my life, Father, would you show me my darkness? Would you show me what I can't see? When you want to see what you cannot see, Father, I turn the light on. So sometimes it's the darkness in us that's repelling the light in Him. Because the darkness, light shined on the darkness, but the darkness comprehended it not. God can be trying to do something wonderful in your life, but if you don't understand it, if you're not willing to accept it, you can literally say, God doesn't do anything for me. But you're the one resisting him. It could be the things that you've gone through in your family. It could be the pains, hurts that you've experienced from others. It could be the abuse. It could be the negative comments and the ridicule and the picking and the degrading that you've gone through. It could be your lack of even hearing about Jesus or His Word. It could be so many things that could be in our life where we say, I know truth or I think I see clearly. I mean, but if you're not experiencing God to the degree of his awesomeness, his wonderfulness, his, his love, his, his power, his grace, his presence. You might want to say, Father, what in me? What darkness in me? I love how Jesus says, if you walk in the light, Peter wrote, John wrote, if you walk in the light as he is in the light, he'll shed more light on your path. 
1 John 1, 5 through 7. He talks about that light. And uh, I'm go- I want to pull it up because I'll probably just kind of end there tonight for whatever reason. Let's keep it short. John 1, 1, I think, verse 5 through, not think, I know it is, 5 through 7. It says this. It says, this then is the message. Listen to this, the message which we have heard from him. And we declare to you that God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. Darkness equals lack of understanding. Darkness equals that which you don't know. So we can't claim that we know, but we're still walking in darkness. We can't claim that we know the truth if we're not walking in his full life. His anointing, his power, his glory. That's where you have to say there must be darkness in me. Amen. Must be something I don't know. Must be something I don't know. This is the message we declared of him that God, ain't, God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Listen to this. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. John is being pretty strong for the writer of love. He's saying that if you're saying that you love God and you know God, but yet you have sin in your life, you are not experiencing the life of Almighty God. Listen. I don't know how to express that beyond my words. I am, I am lacking the ability. But can y'all imagine for a moment the God that said, let there be, and there was a world, an earth. Can you imagine the God that said, let the waters part and the seas parted? Can you imagine the God that slung the stars into their, their, their places. Can you imagine the God that spoke the universes into being? The expanse that is mind-boggling beyond millions of light years and be in control of it all. If that God right there is from that vastness all the way down to what you're experiencing in your life right now, Do you think that's the full manifestation of him? I'd say I see through a glass darkly. I can barely see him. But if my desire is to see him more, if my desire is to say, I'm not going to lie to myself, I'm not going to let my circumstances or my life, Father, I want you. I want your life. I want your life. That comes through Jesus Christ. I want your life. And I want you to show me everything that hinders that life. Every lie. Everything I don't understand. Don't know. Father start bringing me revelation and understanding. So I can walk in greater light. In greater life. Listen to what he says right here. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, listen to this, this is the process, as he is in the light. As you walk with God at the best of your knowledge and ability, as you walk with him, if you're walking with him, you'll want to see more. And if you're walking with him, guess what he does? He don't leave you where you were five years ago. He continues to show you new things and teach you more. And you, be, you just continue. And the next thing you know, all you know is you're walking forward and you're living your life. But your friends look at you and go, he's not the same guy he was six months ago. And all of a sudden, you have changed because you're walking in light. You're just following the Lord. You're fellowshipping. You're spending some time with him in his word and in prayer. You're worshiping him. You're cutting on, you know, uh, Spotify. You're going to the worship music, praise music, and you're praising him in your room. You're worshiping him, and he's shedding more light on your path. So I'm going to finish this by this. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. 
Here's what I want to say. This is what I realized that the more that I fellowship with him, the more he so lovingly comes to me and says, Son, that's a wrong attitude. Oh. Son, do you see that person? Yes, you have to forgive them. Oh. Son, do you see that person? Yeah. You told them you'd do such and such. Oh. Okay. Whatever that truth is, he continues to give us so that we can walk with him in greater and greater understanding and revelation. And that's why he said, light exposes darkness, but he is right there with us. He said, if we walk in the light, listen to this, what he said right there, isn't that not beautiful? He said, if we walk in the light and have fellowship with him, guess what? There's exposure to our sin or to our error. And guess what? The blood of Jesus is right there to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He ain't trying to beat you up. He brings exposure to bring removal. So you can be transformed. We're at a time of Halloween where darkness is fun. But I'm going to tell you this. If you walk in ignorance to the truth, it won't be fun. Because in real life, the enemy will find access into your life and try to destroy you. It's not cute. It's not funny. It's not mysterious. It's evil, wicked, and painful. We must be people, and I know that we are, that say, Father, give us truth. The youth are fixing to go. I'm going to pray so they can go. They're fixing to go. To, to this uh, judgment in Winfield. I believe it'll be fun. I do. I believe it'll be, you know, fun. It's great to get together. That's awesome. And y'all y'all got me excited to have all y'all here tonight. We love you and thank God for you. Um, amen. Yeah, give them a hand clap for being here. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're thankful. So here's the thing is, when they go tonight, they'll see things, and there'll be lights turning on. There'll be lights turning on. And the Lord may speak to you. Listen, listen to me. Don't get embarrassed. Your friends are with you. you got some great leaders, and there will be pastors even going. I think my wife's going. The point is, get somebody to pray for you. Pray with you. If, if the Holy Spirit convicts you of something, don't feel rejected. Don't feel bad about it. Know that Father is showing you so that this can be taken care of. Amen? Amen. Father wants us walking in more and more light because he's wonderful. Hallelujah. I said he's wonderful, hallelujah. Y'all stand with me. Hallelujah, he's wonderful. Hallelujah, he's so wonderful. I wish sometime I could pull all of y'all into, into my prayer closet when I'm worshiping with you. With, you know, when I'm worshiping God, you could come with me. And I know some of y'all experience God as well or greater than I do. My point is, is that I just know my experience. And so it's so awesome when he shows up. Amen. I mean, when he shows up, hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We came and prayed uh, Saturday night and God just showed up. Hallelujah. And so just walking in his presence. Hallelujah. And he always begins to shine a light. Hallelujah. He always begins to, he wants us walking in truth because he's in truth. Hallelujah. He wants us walking in his life because there's power and victory there. He don't want no darkness because that's where the enemy finds access. Hallelujah. He wants to bring truth to you because truth's the only thing that makes you free. Hallelujah. So there is no bondage. There is no sin. There is no problem, y'all, in your life that God cannot show you how and why and, and, and give you victory over it. He can. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for these people. I thank you for these young folks. Father God, the, these young adults, hallelujah, is what they are. Father God, they may be teenagers, but Father God, I thank you for every one of their lives. And Father God, they came tonight, even if it was for fellowship. Father God, they showed up. And Father, you are thankful. I'm thankful. We're thankful. And Father God, I thank you tonight, even for everyone that's here, the adults included. Father, that this word, that Holy Ghost, you'll take it in this time of Halloween and you'll say, I'm going to walk in truth. I'm going to walk in life. And I'm not going to even lie to myself. I'm going to be honest before God and I want God to be honest with me. And God will begin to speak to you and walk with you like your best friend. And he will lead you into all truth and you'll see your life transformed. Hallelujah. 
Glory be to God. There's fellowship with the Father. Hallelujah. Fellowship, glory to God. He, the Bible says he'll never leave us or forsake us. He'll stick closer than a brother. You need a friend tonight. Ask Jesus to be that friend. Hallelujah. Even if you got a best friend, it ain't a BFF better than Jesus. Hallelujah. He won't just be with you. He'll be in you. Hallelujah. He'll move in and walk with you and talk with you and lead you and guide you. Father, I thank you for doing it tonight in everybody's life. In Jesus' mighty name, everybody said amen. 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 amen.